Alright, so basically in this tutorial, we're gonna do uh, supers, um, and we're gonna change a few things about the aiming. First thing about the supers is that uh, since our aiming system it doesn't use a joystick or anything, uh, the super, the, the the super like UI will look different than in Brawl Stars since we're not using a joystick. And the super is also not going to use a joystick either so it's gonna basically it's gonna be a bar that charges up when it charges up uh, you, you can press a key or a button and when you press that key or a button then uh, the next attack you do will be a super so that's how it's gonna work the first thing we're gonna change the aiming because that's the easiest part uh, to teach so let me let me tell you what I want to change first if you see if I test this You can see, I can basically aim wherever, and I I know some some things in Brawl Stars allow you to aim like the range, but usually characters have a set range. Like like they can't like they either have a short range or high range. But right now in our tutorials, you can basically choose the range, and I don't want that to happen. You can have a, have a set range. So let's do that. That will be in a local script, and I, uh, this shows I should probably make paste bins of the scripts since they're getting more advanced. So first of all, let's see. Uh, let's note down what the range is going to be. Uh, I don't know how much range is a good range, so I'm just going to make like 15 studs. Oh yeah, the ranges will be in studs, by the way. Now 15 studs. Now uh, I'm going to do the mobile part later. Right now I'm just going to do the computer part. So, um, right now, uh, let's actually keep the raycast.instance, that instance, stuff like that. We're going to do local endpoint is, and we are, the local endpoint is the root part, that position. The endpoint is just going to be where the raycast is going. Root part, that position plus this plus this except we're going to change the thing i'm going to put the extra parentheses over here I'm going to put a look vector over here and we're going to do c frame dot new got a comma root part stop position now this is basically just gonna now right now this is just gonna make endpoint right next to the humanoid we don't want that to happen so we're gonna add another parentheses into c frame that new uh and then do times times range times range and now that we have the endpoint we are now We are now gonna change this into the endpoint. And this we are going to change into the endpoint too. I think it's just gonna do this endpoint. Now we're also gonna change the mobile too. So let's move this up to a mobile, except this time uh, instead of the mouse hit position, it will be the mobile position. Um, and I think that would be this over here yeah and just like the thing at the bottom we are going to change this into endpoint uh, and this into endpoint 2 now let's test this and see if there is a set range and you don't have to do this part if you want to choose your range but most likely if you don't want it to be overpowered you should probably make it a set range like I'm doing yeah, and I'm pretty sure most brawlers have a set range too. You can see here, oh, uh, yeah, it works. I basically can only set this range. And you might be noticing the projectile goes way out of this range. And we can fix that. Now. Uh, not a uh, pretty easy way to fix that. 
the thing is, um, basically, the part already deletes itself when it touches the wall, so we don't have to factor in any of that, but we have to factor in it just deleting stuff when it gets out of the range. And now, how do we make it get out of the range? Well, first of all, what I'm about to code right now, it won't work if you decide to skip whatever I just taught you before. It, this, this, this will only work if you have a set range. Uh, basically, actually, it might work if you have... If you get to choose your range, I don't know. I don't know. But basically, um, so I'm gonna show you how the code I'm about to teach you works. So if you see here, right, um, if I move this around, you can notice it kind of makes like a circle, right? It makes a circle. So all we gotta do is code it. So if the projectile goes out of this circular range, it will destroy itself and we can do that by seeing the distance between uh, the projectile and the player because the thing is the distance is always the same on all sides because it's a perfect circle that's a bit of math there and um, we're going to do that by the magnitude yeah here and uh, right before we fire the server we are actually going to add another parameter and that parameter is the position of our humanoid root part add that there pretty sure we have it in the mobile too yeah over here the root part that position yeah and now uh, at that I'm thinking if we should destroy the parts on the client or the server side I think it should be the server side so uh, hopefully this doesn't lag uh, whatever it makes projectile, we're also gonna add the root part, root part pause, and we're gonna do, uh, yeah. Also, we have this. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna comment this out because we're we're gonna make it delete itself, anyways. So we're gonna make a listener, local listener, and this is gonna listen for every single frame. So listener equals game dot run service dot. Uh, let's see. Heartbeat. Let's see, I think it's heartbeat connect and this is gonna run this code inside here is gonna run every single frame basically if the if projectile dot position minus root part to pause dot magnitude is uh more oh yeah we're probably gonna have to do another thing here yes make another parameter add range over here and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna also put range oh shoot why did I put it I'm gonna just put range here. Now, if it's more than the range, well, actually more or equal to the range, let's do that. Then, game that the breeze add item projectile zero. I spelled that wrong. I spelled that wrong too. And now, you might be wondering why we're using game that the breeze and not destroy. And game that the breeze basically. It, just, it destroys a part after a specific amount of seconds. We put zero seconds as a specific amount of seconds. The reason why we're using the breeze over destroy is because if you try to destroy a part that's already destroyed, it's gonna it's gonna error. It's gonna make an error in your code. But if you use the, the breeze, that won't happen. Now, uh, if you guys don't know what a memory leak is, uh, don't worry. You don't have to know. But basically, uh, it's gonna it's gonna make your game lag. And this code really right we have right here is gonna make it's gonna cause memory leaks. So how do we solve these memory leaks? Uh, what we're gonna do is, whenever the part gets destroyed, we are going to disconnect the listener. That dis listener disconnect. Same thing here. I'm gonna disconnect the listener. So then, because you might notice what I just did, I think I did it a bit wrong because I did it on the server side and it makes it delayed. Because whenever the server, whenever the server actually deletes a part, it takes a moment for that part to get deleted on the client too. So you might be wondering, how do we do this? Well, the easy thing is, we just don't do it on the server side. Well. Um, in case the client makes a mistake, I'm still going to destroy the part of the server side, but I'm also going to do it on the client too. This might make your game slightly more laggy, but it's only slightly. I don't think so affect that much. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're actually going to make a new a new script. Start a player script this time. It's going to be a local script. I'm going to uh, make this um, 
uh, projectile deletion and we are also going to make a new remote event called uh, projectile deletion yeah let's just name it this and um, we are going to do it on the server side uh, whenever it makes this part gain that replica storage dot projectile deletion fire all clients so basically all players it's gonna fire all players it's gonna fire uh, the the projectile yeah the projectile the root part position the original root position and the range and we're gonna and when and when the player receives this request which is not that that we have the uh, the projectile yeah the projectile the root part pause and range and we're basically just gonna copy this right we're just gonna we just gonna copy this local listener uh, listener this 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 if the projectile is back to support the range it's gonna delete the projectile the listener is gonna be disconnected and another thing we can actually do is uh since we can't really detect the projectiles yeah, and if you want to check that the projectile is destroyed we're going to do if not projectile then listener disconnect all right now let's test this and i'm gonna also i can add a print or uh i'm gonna add a print here so i can know that my script is working now let's test this and remember you put projectile deletion in starter player scripts not starter character scripts because uh, it's not going to work because starter character scripts actually uh, re remakes the scripts every single time you respond which won't be good and there's an error okay so I just spent like 50 minutes trying to figure out this one error that was occurring and I had to change a lot so just, first of all we do not need this anymore that's because we changed it a lot in the script so first of all you're gonna add this a uh, folder that's where we're gonna store all of our projectiles in that folder so we can keep track of them and for something else I'll tell you now uh, first of all yeah we gotta obviously parent the projectile to that folder so you can see I did it over where did I do it over here yeah and I also set the I also did this I set the attribute of the projectile to um, the root part, I set an attribute of the projectile that's called the root part position to the root part position, uh, one the range to the range. Now, to and use and these come in handy in the projectile deletion. And what else did I change? Let's see. Oh, yeah, I also added this basically, if for some reason a projectile touches a humanoid but it's out of the range, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do damage to the humanoid. Uh, this can be good if we're sol for solving hackers stuff like that, you know. Uh, although I don't really think this will, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't write this line of code. This is actually, I think this is important enough. You should write this. Anyways, now projectile deletion. Instead of making it where a remote event tells the script to delete a part, uh, we're just gonna detect whenever the part goes inside the projectile's folder. It's gonna first of all, is it a part? Then yes. Then it's gonna store the, the attributes of that projectile into variables. Those attributes are given inside this server script. And all the remaining code is the same except we put child instead of projectile. So I just tested it and it works. Now we're gonna make the supers. So first, uh, I'm gonna make a, yeah, we gotta make the UI. So let's make a new UI. This one is going to be called Super UI. Wow. Put a frame inside of this UI. This frame will be covering the entire screen except it's invisible. Now we are going to add a bit like a, a kind of a progression bar. Now the prog progression bar makes sure 
is uh, you're using the scale, not the offset. Oh, mine's gonna be. I'm gonna make mine this. Nah, that's too big. Yeah, this big. Now, obviously, you guys can change the size. The size doesn't really matter. It's just a visual. But this bar will tell you how much Toy Super is filled up. Now, I'm gonna design. I'm gonna design my bar. Very simple. Maybe even a bit too simple, because I'm leaving you guys to do it. Now, inside this frame, I'm gonna name this frame background. I'm gonna make another frame inside of that frame. I'm gonna parent it here. And this time, I'm gonna change size to cover that entire frame. And the position is zero 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 zero. And we're gonna name this uh, super bar. And I'm gonna make it yellow, because that's the color of the super. Set it back and color it. You can make this yellow. And this is really important. I mean, this doesn't really affect me. It's just a visual thing, but it's it's really good for visual. So I would suggest so putting a UI stroke, which basically adds an outline. And I can change the thickness of this outline to this. Yeah, that, that's that's a pretty good outline, you know. And uh, we're gonna add a new remote event. The server's basically tell. It's the server's gonna tell. Uh, the client to charge up this bar every time it hits a humanoid so charge super and I'm actually going to it's okay if you don't have this plugin you can just remake this remake this uh, text label I'm instead of having a super browser frame I'm gonna actually make a text label you see now we have text inside of there this text uh, I'm gonna make it the color I'm gonna make it scaled and I'm gonna make it the color white now, making it the color white is obviously just a visual thing. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but I'm also gonna add a stroke to the color. I mean, to the text, so it's easier to read, like this. But I'm gonna actually make the text nothing, and that's well, what the text is for. We're gonna make the text say press, press this to um, charge, to release your super or stuff like that, and. If you don't have a super, the text won't show up. Actually, for mobile players, we have to make them press a button in order to activate the super. So, I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry I've got to do this again. But remake this, except make it a text button. Not a text label, sorry. But, uh, so yeah. Now, basically, whenever... Uh, whenever uh, you hit... Hit, you hit a humanoid it's gonna the server's gonna tell the client to charge the super search so charge super fire client player because we only want one player to charge the super not all of them at the same time and yeah I think all we gotta do is just fire the client because every I want to make it where every hit is like plus one into the counter for charging your super and yeah stuff like that now we're actually gonna make the super so we're gonna go into top down camera. And we're actually gonna make this background at first this background. Uh, not the background, I mean the super bar. The size is gonna be zero 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 zero. Yeah. Now what we're gonna do is uh when we get the re the request to charge our super client event. Oh yeah, we're gonna make it with how many hit points you need to do until you super start so we'll go super bar point super bar number i'm gonna make it where it takes 15 hits i, I know my range is also 15 i just like the number 15 uh nothing nothing really to that anyways charge super uh we are going to do first we're gonna find it this super ui so Local super UI equals game that players that local player that player GUI wait for charge super UI super now super UI uh wait for charge background oh no 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 not background frame frame and then the background and then the super bar we're gonna change the size of the super bar to be UDEM2 Oh, I still don't know what U them two means. Probably use U. And I think actually never mind. Then probably means dimension. And we're gonna do this. 
Except we're gonna change this first number because the second number is the y value. We're only gonna change the x value. So the x value is gonna be from one from zero to one. It's gonna be, one is all the way charged. And zero is not charged at all. So in order to do this, we're still gonna, we're also gonna store how many we how uh, what's the current number of hits you have? So local super hit points equals zero. Make sure this is zero. Unless you want to start off with some of your supercharged. So we're going to do super hit points divided by super bar number. And we're going to also increase the hit points by plus one every single time you the server tells you to charge super. Now let's test this. Right now I've only made the charging part of the super, not the actual super. So I'm just saying. One thing I would like to add, if you're ever complaining about how my scripts suck, make sure you actually finish watching the tutorial. So, see, my super superbar is not charged, but if I hit someone, it starts charging. Yeah, that definitely is not supposed to go like that. Because we've got to add a max. So, basically, um, math.clamp this, this, uh, zero is the minimum superbar numbers max the math that clamp basically just puts a maximum or minimum stuff so it can't go over that value uh, and I'm also gonna make it print the super hit points oh so guys um, your super actually increases by two every single time you hit someone so let's solve that and this is actually not the client's fault it's the server so let's go to the server and let's see if part Dun, 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 dun. And do local debounce equals false. And if the debounce is true, it's not going to register the damage. If debounce equals true, then return in. So it can end this, the script. And basically, we only want the human race to take damage one time for one projectile. There's a glitch going on where you take damage twice. So in order to fix that, we're just going to make the debounce true the first time you hit someone. Now let's test it, and it shouldn't increase by two every single time you hit someone. And let's test. Now it should take 15 to charge up my super. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, that works. Now let me see if it can go over. Yeah, I can go over. Oh, I know why I can go over. We instead of making this, I'm gonna change this to one. All right. Now, once it does go over, so if super hit points is more or less than super bar number, then we're gonna activate our super. So um, let's make it where. Super bar, um, yeah. First thing I'm gonna do super yard. Wait, for, actually, we don't even have to wait. That frame, that background, that super bar, um, that text. I'm gonna make the text press, press to activate super or press, uh, press E, right? So now that we did that, we're gonna make it where make a function local function uh, activate super I don't like the space the first thing we we'll do when we activate our super we're gonna put the hit points back to zero obviously and we're gonna and of course we're gonna make it where a super activated super activated is gonna be false at first because you don't activate super at the beginning uh, we're gonna make the super hit point zero, super activated to true. I'm gonna add something here where if your super is activated, you can't. If your super is currently activated, you can't get any super points. So this pre this prevents people from uh, activating two supers at the same time, which might glitch the game. So we're gonna do if super activated, then return and super activated equals true. I'm gonna repaste this so bar goes back why is there 
why is there a blue thing? Oh, super UI. Yeah, let's, let's also uh, paste this inside. Activate super super activated equals true. And how we're going to actually make this function run is if um, game uh, user input game that user input game get service user input service that input actually no we don't even have to make a new script we should actually make this function go at the top top of your script and we're gonna go we're already says input begin so if input that user input type equals enum that key code dot e because that's why I made then your super will be activated so we're gonna do activate super yay and same thing if you click the button over here it's gonna activate super too so uh, uh so this actually we could yeah this uh i'm gonna paste this to super bar to activated connect and activate super now uh you kind of want a visual effect so you can know when your super is activated and we're gonna do just that so if the super is activated and the mouse the beam will actually be yellow instead of white so we are gonna make it inside of activate super we're also gonna make the beam the beam beam dot oh we might have to uh, move this down over here uh, beam dot color equals color sequence dot new inside the color sequence I'm gonna do yellow which I remember is this RGB value now see if this works right now the su super attack won't be any different from the normal attack oh I think I know why it's not turning yellow it's cause the lighting so we're gonna make the beam dot brightness Oh no, light influence is zero. So it's not going to be influenced by light in any way, shape, or form. Now let's see if it turns yellow. Oh yeah, one more thing, we're going to make it a super UI. A super, we're going to make the text go back to blank when you're using the super. So we just do text. For example, for some reason, activate super is not being activated. So let's see why that can be the case. Oh, so for activate super, we're gonna do if super hit points is less than super bar number, then return end. Okay, so. Oh, we're gonna make this the key code, not use it in part time. So make this key code. Spam. Press to activate super. I pressed E, and it's yellow. Except it hasn't changed a bit, and I'll tell you guys how to change it. And I'm gonna reset, so I can test it with. Uh... Oh, okay. We're gonna fix the glitch right now. It's registering hit even if the person is already dead. So, I'm gonna do it. Um. If um, if part dot parent find first child humanoid and part dot parent that humanoid dot health is less or equal to zero, so if it's dead, then it's gonna not do any of this good. It's just gonna return. Oh, that's why. Okay, guys, go inside your text button, make active on, so you can actually press the button. Now, once that we had that, oh yeah, I'll see gonna change it. Uh, by making it where if you if if you fire a projectile, then it's not gonna be a super, and your super will run out once you use it. So then we're gonna make the super activate it to false under every single one of these. Make sure it's under, not above. Then where's the other one? Yeah, over here. Super activated equals false. And we're gonna add another parameter which is super activated over here too. 
So if you're super and when you when you deactivate your super, we're gonna make the we're gonna make the color of the beam back to normal. So we're gonna do this, do this, two five five, two five five. All right. Now time for the server stuff. Oh, I'm just gonna make the most lazily designed super ever. It's just gonna be a bigger projectile. <laughs> and um, oh yeah, you know what? Let's make it if your super is activated. If you yeah, if your if your super is activated, your range will be bigger. Uh, that would be pretty fun. So once your super is activated, range will be 40. It was 15 before, now it's 40. We're also gonna make it where you de whenever you deactivate super, the range goes back to 15. So, unless you've changed the number to not 15, you're gonna change that too. Now we're gonna add a projector here, which is super. So, um, if super, then else. So if it's not a super, we are going to put this inside of else. If it is a super, we're gonna put this inside of elf, but we're gonna change it. So let's see, if it's a super, the color of the projectile will be yellow because I'm not creative at all. The size of the projectile, let's make it 10. Is that too big? Okay, no, let's make it 10, but let's make the Y, y like 2, so it doesn't accidentally collide with floor and delete itself. Um, let's see. And we're gonna also make it do dirty damage. I I don't know if this works. That's all I changed. Remember, it's your super, so you guys can make your super different. Like you can make it, you can make it fire multiple projectiles instead of just one big one, which is what I'm doing. So, see if this works. All right, we are going to charge up my super. Press to activate super. Activated it and see. Oh shoot! This is pretty big range in. Yo, why is this actually cool? All right, so yeah, that's basically all. I might put the scripts inside of the description and paste pins. I don't know if I will. That'll be up to future me to decide. And tell me if you. I'm sorry, if this isn't accurate to the actual Brawl Stars. It's supposed to be inspired by that. Brawl Stars, not completely accurate to it, or it would. It wouldn't be a Roblox ripoff. So. Yeah, uh, let me know. I don't know if I'll actually make a part four since I low key don't play that much Brawl Stars. I don't know what to do next. Um, and even if I do something next, this series doesn't really get that much views. I don't know if I'll do a part four. Uh, but if maybe if there's an easy mechanic, I could probably implement it in part four. But for now, I don't know if I'll do a part four. So yeah, that's all for the video. And uh, one thing I'd like to mention is. Uh, I just recently released a trailer for my game, and that game comes out uh, the 1st of July, it's a fighting game, uh, so I would, yeah, I'm basically, so, I'm just asking if you would look at that game trailer, the, the game is called Crossovers, it's a fighting game where you play as characters from other Roblox games, and I worked pretty hard on that game, so, yeah, if you just looked at the trailer, and just see if it was a pretty good game, or if you think it sucks, uh, just let me know, so yeah, you could. You should watch the crossovers trailer.